welcome back to off the record i have priya anand with me here who is telling me all about herself on screen and off it and before i venture on to find out what exactly is priya anand when she is not shooting i'm here to find out all about her in the shooting spot on the sets what is she up to so priya anand also before that could you tell me more about your childhood a little about how did this whole fascination of movies happen um, and how did you actually work towards it i grew up in the time of shri devi so that's how my fascination with indian cinema happened I think she's the epitome of an Indian actress. She's glamorous, she's beautiful, she's sensual and all those things and extremely talented at it. Mm. Um but I you know just watching movies I was very fortunate. I had parents that like cinema and uh watched lots of world cinema. Mm -hmm. Um but my love has always been with Indian cinema so I've always liked the commercial masala stuff. Okay. Is there any kind of challenging role that you're looking forward to portray? For me because I'm a newcomer and I mm -hmm. haven't been to acting school, I think anything is challenging. Okay. Um You know, I'm still trying to find my place as an actor and try different kinds of cinema. Uh, every role has always been different from the other. So I'm hoping to continue this. Maybe in two years from now, I'll be able to show you what my dream role is. But as of now, everything is my dream role. Okay. And uh, during uh, filming Telugu films, how different is it filming uh, one language to the other? Is it too very difficult for you to adapt to Hollywood um, after having traveled from Hollywood? I started off Hollywood. in Tamil cinema. but um i was really fortunate in telugu i got really good opportunities i started off with really big names you know be it the producers mm -hmm. the directors the actors um i would really uh, i'd have to say this that the telugu audiences has been very kind to me they've uh, mm -hmm. really welcomed me with open arms and they see me as angavi to ponna madri patakra gena so i uh, i'm very grateful to them for that and um i feel a lot more comfortable there i mean Maybe because of the last two films of mine were in Telugu that I meet the press more often over mm -hmm. there and I have more of an interaction with them. So I was really excited about One Eighty being a bilingual film to yes. kind of uh, come back to the Tamil audiences. But speaking of difficulty, uh, you know, I speak Tamil and Telugu, so even with One Eighty being a bilingual film, it wasn't so hard for me. The language wasn't a problem. Right. I remember reading somewhere that you had described yourself as being this. Uh, A hyperactive child. So, were you always the spoiled brat, the unmanageable was, kid at home? I was unmanageable, <laughs> but I don't think I was the spoiled brat. I am the only child, so people hmm. already, you know, have those assumptions that the only children are really spoiled. But um, brats that I've always been. But I've always been very chatty. I'm a people's person. I like talking to people. But that's also been very helpful. You know, uh, when I started off with Lida, I didn't really speak Telugu so well. Hmm. Um, but you know, talking to everybody on set has really helped my language and helped improve that. Right. So um when you when you decided that you want to get into films how did uh, how did your family react to it were they always very supportive They were extremely supportive because they knew I was really passionately driven and I wasn't going to take no for an answer mm -hmm. and it was just me telling them not asking for anybody's permission <laughs> but um you know when they see me working really hard and they see me initially as a parent all they wanted to do is be protective and uh, that's mm -hmm. exactly what they were trying to do but they know I can take care of myself so I think they're all happy and supportive And what are your other interests apart from acting I'm I'm a loser I think everything I do <laughs> in my life is related to movies I like singing I like dance I like drama and all that is movies I like traveling and you know again with my job it's some of the perks of my job mm. my favorite thing to do is to uh, meet a lot of new people and it's all different kinds of people and my job lets me do just that you know i travel to a new place it could be a small town it could be some place like malaysia or some place really nice like taho like taho where we shot but i still get to meet new people and and that's my favorite part okay now a change of topic so how did uh, uh, you get into social causes was there an inspiration behind was there any godfather who guided you no my life has never been about having a godfather it's always been about me kind of wanting to do something and trying to find my way through it Uh, I've always kind of uh, been into, uh, you know, I love playing with children. I love children as such. I, you know, there's so much life in them. They're always so happy, and it's nice to see a child smiling. And uh, I was working on a few things, and at the same time, I had met someone from Save the Children. So it kind of just happened at the right, you know, being at the right place at the right time. And uh, once I kind of got to see the work that they do, I went on a visit and a site visit. and i just knew that i had to kind of pledge my support for this cause and try to create awareness as much as i can but is there a specific reason for you being associated with children especially with children like i said you know i love spending all my time that i can mm. with children i feel like i have better conversations <laughs> and a better time when i'm with kids than with adults but most importantly mm. you know children are the future of tomorrow and they are the citizens sure. of tomorrow and i want to make sure that Every child has the right to their future and to a better life because I had that. I had wonderful mm -hmm. parents and a wonderful support system. 
life wasn't always rosy like everybody else has their issues and their sure. own problems growing up but i had that support system and i want to make sure these kids also have that so when you were working with these children what was it like i'm sure they must have been really very really excited seeing this it's, pretty it's dance wonderful. from the film industry but you know the best part about these kids is that they don't really care who you are they don't care how famous you are how pretty you are they just want someone to kind of play with and have some fun with and you know just watching these kids with bright smiles playing these games and you know fighting with each other was so much fun and but i know there's some there's a lot of seriousness behind their stories and uh, i think it's uh, the work that see the children is doing has just been wonderful and i'm really really glad that i've kind of gotten to see firsthand what they've been doing so how is it working with them when you're there spending a day what is what is the plan like what is your agenda when um, how do you spend that do you chalk out a plan you have to do this when Some, i'm with the kids yeah, okay yeah. so all that we had planned was for me to go on these visits to see the mm. work that see the children has done so once i get there it's just me and the kids just having fun with them watching what they do so they had this after school program in one place near virupuram they had rescued children that were sent out for domestic labor mm. so um this one particular program was an after school program for these children that were rescued and also children from the village and they were just having a blast like you know they were playing games uh they were dancing they were singing and my favorite part about this program is that they had uh, they were teaching them tirukural and lots of other things which has lots of life lessons in them so mm -hmm. these kids are educated on how to be better citizens do you also partake in some of these teaching classes and things like as that? of now no i'm just kind of really mm -hmm. new to this whole process i'm trying to get to learn as much as i can about uh the issues of child labor in india and um and also the work that see the children does but eventually this is a long term connection that i'm kind of long term mm -hmm. bond that we're forming and i'm hoping to do a lot more eventually okay i heard you even shared a meal with them so I what did. was that like the meal was khichdi it was like pongal with some <laughs> vegetables and you know it was quite yum and the teachers prepared it themselves for these kids so i thought hey why not let me try it and see how the food is and it's it's quite nice okay and, so do you cook yourself too i used to but you know in india you have plenty of yummy food available for really cheap and i love street food mm. so you know there's no point cooking at home when you have yummy food available <laughs> do you have bigger plans to work with these children for the welfare of them like i said it's a long term commitment you know so i don't want to jump right in and say hey this is what i'm doing and we're immediately doing this and this and that i'm still trying to learn about the cause i'm still like, trying to get to know involve myself with see the children and see all the wonderful work that they've been doing and uh, eventually we'd like to kind of develop new things and try to see what my place is with this organization and how it is that i can take this relationship forward yeah. have you also worked towards creating any kind of awareness about this trying to involve more people your family into this and things like um, that um my family is all in the us so it's quite <laughs> difficult trying to get them to be involved in this mm -hmm. but uh you know we're trying to get public awareness because that's the most important when you see domestic uh, how child labor mm -hmm. it's mostly well to do families that employ these children and a lot of times they have kids themselves and they send their kids to school but they have a kid working at home ironing their kids clothes and Absolutely. doing all those things and the main goal is to kind of educate people and educate these children whose parents send them away educate the parents about the ill effects of child labor and i think we you know once we kind of get people to know about it their own conscience will kind of prevent them from doing too much right would your dreams be restricted to the welfare of children alone or do you want to broaden this whole uh, social activist in you see my dream is to see like a beautiful perfect world like everybody mm. else i want to see everything perfect and picture perfect and looking really nice and only good things happening but unfortunately uh if i kind of uh, spread myself too th thin by you know getting involved in different causes mm. then i'm not going to be focused so much on this issue and this issue is most important children don't have a voice to speak out and it's it's important that someone does and i hope i could kind of help them in that process you seem to be having too much on your plate so how do you balance uh, it's your actually life? not so much i mean this is i take this as a job i take this as a responsibility like how i schedule my movies and i schedule my travel and all those things i think this is also something that is a, is high on my priority list so i it doesn't seem like so much and seriously watching these kids smile and seeing them happy is so rewarding and it's really not that i'm a celebrity or i'm an actor mm. that they have all this joy in their faces it's just because they're really happy to kind of see someone take interest in them and i think uh, it's important that as citizens we all that's really lovely you've actually inspired me to actually work go into an orphanage or go into some kind of a cause and oh, work I'm towards so it oh i'm so glad 
And the thing about what we're trying to do in Save the Children is not just have people, uh, you know, contribute money. Money is great. Mm. It is wonderful. But also people that want to, you know, give their time. Like you said, you want to kind of go into an orphanage. So just for people to kind of, they can log into our website. It's www.savethechildren.in. Mm -hmm. uh, get more uh, knowledge about what's going on in our country, in our mm -hmm. state. I mean, let's just look in our neighborhood first yeah. and then kind of. Um, spread the word elsewhere. So get involved. Uh, you can always volunteer your time. You can meet these children. You can see the wonderful work that you know this organization has been doing, and um, see where the money goes. And then, if you want to contribute, or, you know, any any kind of support is good enough right now. Is there any other campaign that you were working on, especially with the Save the Children or any other? Uh, no, we're just starting off. Like I said, uh, it's my first month in. This is very new for me mm. and for them to have me on board. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I was kind of busy and caught up with 180's release. So we're hoping mm. that soon, now that I'm wrapping up with the film and the film's out, that um, I start going to more site visits. The Save the Children also works uh, worked a lot with the tsunami relief. Mm. So my next uh, agenda on the list is to go meet the tsunami beneficiaries, which I'm really looking forward to. Okay. I'm sure just as you have uh, big plans for the welfare of children, she has bigger plans in the film industry as well. She'll tell you more about it soon after this break.